Uh, let's go right to the phone lines. Again, the number to dial, triple eight ask Hank. First up, Jerry. He's listening in Rochester Hills, Michigan, Sirius XM 131. Hi, Jerry. Hi, Hank. How you doing? Good. Great. Um, I'm curious about the emergence of the Bethel Church and Bill Johnson. Um, the church that I go to seemed to, like, uh, dip its toe in the water with it a while ago with the music. And now um, he's being quoted oftentimes from our pulpit. And people are going out to his church to get anointed. And there just seems to be a lot of interesting things going on that I don't know are, are sound. And I'm just curious if you have any advice for, for me. Yeah, I mean, this is a very, very toxic ministry. I wrote about this in principle in a book called Counterfeit Revival. Uh, and, and, and in that book, what I do is I contrast genuine revival from the kinds uh, with, with the kinds of things that you're uh, you're going to find at Bethel Church in Redding, California, with Bill Johnson as the senior pastor, but people like Todd White now, newest rage in uh, in these Christian circles. He has tens of thousands of followers. Why? Because. He's promising that as he walks through crowds, as he walks through malls, as he goes about his daily life, people are getting healed left and right uh, from all kinds of maladies. And so there's a great, great propaganda machine that backs him up, Charisma Magazine. Then you have big churches that start talking about it. And pretty soon, very much like happened with the counterfeit revival uh, in Pensacola, Florida, people start flocking to the scene. And uh, the hell of it, if you will, is, uh, is those people who are most desperate. And when you're sick, I can tell you from personal experience, if you are not enveloped in a cloak of peace, you can get very desperate. Uh, you want to be healed. Uh, this world has its good points. You know, the next world's a lot better, but, you know, all of us feel like we have a mission to complete in this world, and so you want to be healed. And I still remember with great pain in my heart uh, when I was writing the book, uh, Counterfeit Revival, uh, hearing the story of a man whose baby had just died. And he was so desperate for a resurrection and he was listening to the counterfeit revivalists in Pensacola, Florida. He drove all the way across the country with a dead baby in an ice chest. Well, there's a baby on ice drives across that country, you can imagine the agonizing experience, only to find when he gets there, it's all a hoax. And uh, this is precisely what Bill Johnson is unfortunately perpetrating. Um, you know, they have their healing rooms, they have their schools of supernatural ministry, uh, they emphasize the need of believers to return to a ministry of signs and wonders. And uh, they consider uh, miracles, signs and wonders to be a norm. Now, do I believe in healing? I absolutely do. I absolutely do. But through proper means. Not through con artist, uh, sleight of hand, sleight of mind, a kind of shenanigans. If you look at the theology of Bethel Church, what you in essence find is the theology of a very capricious God. Not only that, but you find loads and loads of examples that really aren't examples at all. In other words, this is being hyped. You know, of course, Johnson tells of God having a storehouse of body parts. In fact, it might be worth listening to him as he communicates this from his own lips. Years ago, one of our students had an encounter with the Lord. It was really quite bizarre. In heaven, she actually saw this room with spare body parts. You say, well, that doesn't exist in heaven. Well, I don't know. I haven't seen it. But she did. And she was with Chris ministering down in Santa Rosa, I think it was. And a gal came up that was in a head-on collision, had really messed up her legs, used to be a dancer and had a very little function. 
And she says, I don't even have a kneecap. Well, the guy who's seen the, heaven, the spare parts room in heaven, she says, well, I'll get one for you. <laughs> that's like, that's gotta be like the ultimate response ever. <laughs> well, I'll get one for you. She reaches her arm like this. She brings it down, lays hands on the knees. Within 15 minutes, she has a new kneecap. And uh, so here we have a warehouse in heaven and the spare parts are coming down. Yeah, and this is a common occurrence. And in his theology, you are not to pray, thy will be done. Uh, this is a non-starter in this community. But if you look at the Bible, Jesus prays, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. The Apostle Paul teaches us to pray in this manner. Peter teaches us to pray in this manner. And who can forget the Apostle James? The words ought to be familiar to all of us. In James chapter 4, I believe, you have James saying, now listen, you who say today or tomorrow, we will go do this or that. We will go to this city or that city. We'll spend a year or two there. We'll carry on our business. We'll make some money. And then James says, why? You don't even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You're a mist that appears for a little while. And then it vanishes. And here are the operative words. Instead, you ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, we ought to live and do this or that. As it is, you boast and brag. All such boasting and bragging is evil. Now, the reason I bring that up specifically is in an article that we did in the Christian Research Journal, and I do believe it's up on the web right now, uh, there is a, uh, an article uh, titled Off the Map, Bill Johnson in the Pursuit of Extra-Biblical Authentic uh, Authentication, article written by Bob Hunter. And this, this article really goes into the excesses that you will find in this ministry and, uh, in fact, has a, a section on what Bill Johnson and company uh, believe when it comes to praying, if it be thy will. And I can tell you that having now uh, had a bo bone marrow biopsy and waiting for the results, the greatest thing in my prayer is to be in the center of God's will. I'm hoping everything will turn out wonderfully well, but ultimately I'm more concerned that I am the center of God's will. That's what I really care about. I've had a cough that's plagued me for uh, many, many months. It's been undiagnosed. And I have been praying about this and praying about this and praying about this, but always in the context of, if it be your will, Lord, because I have found, I've been on this planet a long time, I've found that God teaches you so much in your suffering and sorrows. Now, C.S. Lewis said it is his megaphone to a deaf world. Well, we are coming up to station break, sorry for going on and on about this, but uh, I, I think it needs to be discussed. I've written about this in Christianity in Crisis, Counterfeit Revival, and the Austenification of Christianity, and much, much more. You can find all those resources on the web at equip.org. We'll be right back with answers to your questions. Remember the number to dial, 888-ASK-HANK. <laughs> 